children's physical and emotional status, as well as their social and cognitive development, greatly depend on their family dynamics. The rising incidence of behavioral problems amongst children could suggest that some families are struggling to cope with the increasing stress they are experiencing. Parent-child relationship is one of the longest lasting social ties established in human history. Parents play an irreplaceable role in the lives of their children. This vital relationship positively impacts a child's physical, mental, and emotional well-being. A 17-year-old girl once told me that her mother tells her he loves her. So no matter what happens, that just keeps her, I mean, makes her know that she is loved and blessed. And another parent also told me that he knows everything about his son, so no one can tell him about his son. Now, can you confidently say the same thing about your children or your parents? Welcome to your educative, interactive TV talk show, Getting Real with Fina. Today on your show, we shall be looking at a vital issue, parent-child relationship. I'm your host, Fina Ahime. To keep up with the show, visit www.tushtv.tv. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tushpaste TV. Join the conversation on social media and like us on Facebook at Official Tush TV. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Official Tush TV. We love to hear from you. Welcome back to your talk show, Getting Real with Fina. We are still on that topic, parent to child relationship. This is a must talk issue. And in the studio to do justice to this, I have professionals in the house. I'm very happy and proud to introduce Reverend Christy Bature Ubefo. I also have in the house Comrade Marcy Lucky Chukuladi. And Miss Helen Atasi Clifford. Before we go, let me quickly remind us that Reverend Christy Bature is a mother, a wife, author, and a TV presenter. Not just that, she has her own ministry. She's the founder of San Quan No Ministries. I hope I'm correct, madam. <laughs> Thank you very much. And our comrade, Comrade Massey, you know, I'm scared the way you are looking at me. I hope you are not going to, <laughs> you're not going to finish me today. But our comrade is the national president, National Union of River State Students. Yes, yes. Thank you very I'm so happy to have you in my studio. Thank you. I appreciate it. Your name is Helen, but I prefer to call you Sarafina. <laughs> <laughs> you're free to. Helen is a former speaker at River State Children's Parliament. Wow. Why did I know about this parliament when I was a child? <laughs> <laughs> You're all welcome Thank to you. my students. Yes, let's quickly go straight to the business of today. Parent to child relationship. I'm happy we are all directly and indirectly involved in our individual life in this matter. Parent to child relationship. You are the former speaker of children's parliament. You are a president of student union government. Our mommy here is a mother, a speaker, a TV presenter. I have I've gone to, uh, let me quickly tell you now, I went to your profile, I saw where you give talks to children, to youths, and to parents. I want to start with you. What is relationship? What is parent to child relationship? How, are we doing the right thing? Who is supposed to be a parent and who is supposed to be a child? Well, that's many questions in one. So, <laughs> um, um, relationship is two or more people together living their everyday lives together, either in the office or, but we're narrowing it to parents to and child. children. A parent is not just one who births a baby from their birth canal okay. or donates the sperm to be the father. Wow. 
A parent is the one who stays until the child becomes. And I leave it at the child becomes. And that becoming is whatever is okay. in the destiny of that child. So people, women who deliver babies and throw them in the dustbin because they don't want the baby can't be called a parent. parent. In the real sense of the word. A parent is the one who stays until the child is formed. Okay? And forming a child is not something you do overnight. It's a process. It's a season. It's time. A child is one who has no care in the world. That's the true sense of the definition of a child. Because as far as the child is concerned, mom is there. Dad is there. Life is good. A child should not have any cares in this world except the care of being trained and obeying the rules that are set up by the parent in that house so basically it's um, it's a dynamic kind of um, situation where each one is bringing their dimension to the relationship for it to be effective I, I think that's um, where we'll stop with that definition as per if we're doing things right there's always room for improvement Mm -hmm. There are many who are not doing well, but there are also some who are doing very, very well in parenting. So mm -hmm. it's um, it's relative. Okay, that's that's what I will say. Okay, you point. see, my my many questions, you've just narrowed it down. That uh, answered them, you know, beautifully. You must have come across children's complain about their parents, about the society in general. Can you share something with us? Okay. To add to what she has just said about children, I think we should first and foremost know the definition of a child. Okay. Because that's the perspective I've got to come from. Okay. Since I'm the, I was the Speaker of the River State Children's Parliament, so I think I should go constitutionally. Okay. Okay. Now, according to the Constitution, which was... Um, enacted into law in 2003 um, by the then General Olusha Gono Basanjo through the Child Rights Act. It defines a child as an individual below the age of 18. So whatever we are looking at today, it's below the age of 18. Okay. So that's the definition of a child. Now, when I was the speaker of the River State Children's Parliament, I had lots of complaints from children okay. coming to our table and in one way or the other we sat on it and passed it into bill which one of them was um, child street hawking you know sometimes it's, it's not really bad for parents to send to for children to help their parents but sometimes when you deprive them of some certain things like education like education you know if you are sending a child out to hawk for you you have to consider things, things like what? You have to consider the child's education, basic education, which is one of the compulsory rights of a child. A child needs to develop. We have survival, development, participation, and protection of the child. So as a parent, if you want to send a child to, um, out there to hug, you should consider the time of the child. You shouldn't infringe on the rights of the child on recreation. You shouldn't... Re um, um, you shouldn't infringe on the rights of the child on education. Children need to go to school. So when we are talking about parents and child relationship, what comes to our mind first is love, attention, and care. So as a parent, before you send that child out, you should consider that this child is also a human and not just a child. So I think that is what I have right now to say. Wow, thank you so much. Yeah. Comrade, comrade. <laughs> I can see you are. Uh, this no, this no, women should no, just talk no, fast. No, let me no, let, let no, me tell no, them what's up. So no, tell us, no, right. parent child relationship. Well, parent child relationship. Um, with all due respect to parents and uh, children. I want to start from myself as an. I want to use myself as a case study. So okay. You see, I never had the best from my parents. Okay. I can say it. Unequivocally and uh, without any fear or favor, without any sense of bias. Okay. I never had the best from my parents because I was raised in a manner in which parents were not together. Okay. Okay. I grew up to. Know which that is another issue. I, I grew up to know that mom and dad have to just be separate. So, 
another issue, another question is how then can I grow up like a normal child in this society? Wow. So you see that it's either when families are separated like that, it's either one is staying with the father or one is staying Stay with, with the mother. Yeah. So there is always a vacuum created. How can this vacuum be filled? First, I want to say that being a parent it takes a lot to be called a parent. Just as our Reverend did say here, being a parent is not only um, being the biological father yeah. or mother of the child. Fine. I want to also agree to what she said earlier that being a child, I mean, being a parent has to do with the person who remains until the child becomes. Yeah. Now, if somebody has to remain until the child becomes, so that means there are some factors that have to come into play for the child to become. To become. And these factors, like, I, I just have to wrap it up to say, fine, if a child has to become, the child has to exist. Because wow. existence is the key to all of these things we are talking about. Yes. So, but if a child must exist, are there factors that can also threaten the child's existence? Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. Okay. And what are these factors? Fine, how can you exist when you don't have a shelter? How can you exist when you don't have access to food? How can you exist when there is no security? Yeah. How can you exist when there is no love? So you see, when these things are now in place, I've seen scenarios where people point fingers at some certain persons who are not their biological father and say, this is my parent, this is who I am. Yes, mm. yes. So no, it's not a question of saying, I am your father, we are your parents. No, it's not written on the forehead. Mm -hmm. I've seen scenarios where people have walked up to me to say, you look like the son's person, you look like you, you look like you. <laughs> I can tell you, fine, people must look alike until you do some biological test before you can prove whether or not you and I are related. I can deny you. Mm. I, I mean, there is no, you can, there is nothing to hold me to say, uh, no. But what I'm trying to say here is that for you to be a parent, a parent must be one, responsible and responsive. Be responsible and responsive that you must cater for the child. You must provide these basic things that do not or does not threaten the child's very existence. Okay. Now, when you, these things are provided, you now begin to talk about the order secondary factor, I mean a secondary role. Fine, if you are not existing, if you've not eaten, you cannot think about education. Yeah. Okay? If you have not eaten, if you are not alive, you cannot talk about all these other things the that can be outlined. Things. To keep up with the show, visit www.tushtv.tv Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tourspace TV. Join the conversation on social media and like us on Facebook at Official Tush TV. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Official Tush TV. We love to hear from you. Welcome back to your TV talk show, Getting Real with Fina. This is where you can learn those things you can learn from anywhere else. We are still on that topic, parent-to-child relationship. Now, before we went on break, we were talking about, you know, the different kinds of fatherhood or whatever. But now, let's concentrate on the kind of words we use as parents for our children. Let me start from either of, either of you. What, what are those words? What are those discouraging things? We can all just start talking. You know. Okay, um, let me come in. You see, words are very powerful. Most of the words that were fought by men were not fought because men, um, there was a disagreement in views and opinion. And most of these words are fought with words and sustained and won by words. By the time we begin to address our children wrongly, we say the wrong things to them. You, you know, as you speak and I hear, there is information of a picture in my head begin to see wrong images. For instance, a child comes back from school with his uniform or her uniform tone. What happened to you? And the child says, I, I fought with Daniel, and Daniel told my uniform. You are stupid. You you're mad. As big as you are, you cannot fight Daniel, you cannot. Coconut head. Coconut head. <laughs> All you are saying is that the child is stupid, and the child begins to see him or him or herself to be as stupid. Being stupid. Sorry, let me cut in. I'm a pastor. I live by the Bible. The Bible says, that faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing and hearing. 
when you reinforce stupid, 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 it sticks in the memory. Sticks in the memory. So, and um, more of this happens mostly in our continent, where we don't know how to encourage people to excel. Someone went to school and um, in a class of 10, he took 9 or 8. Instead of it to investigate and find out what went wrong, wrong. what was it that I did not do? I paid your school fees, I, I ensured it, I took you to school every day, I waited for you to come back. I, I, in fact, as you go to school, I give you money to buy sweets, you go, uh, I, you go to school with me. And yet, uh, yet you are still getting nine. Uh, what is wrong? Is it that your teacher is not teaching you well? Or is there any 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 um, breach in, uh, in the communication? Is there any psychological problem? Is there anything troubling you that I don't know? I think the, the, the thing wrong is not with the child. It's with the parent. That, you see, communication deepens relationship. And you know, sorry to add, um, sometimes... Some parents fail to trace back their history. You know, sometimes everything is all about hereditary. Okay. You know? So uh, failure is failure. Very <laughs> it's not <laughs> yes. It's not necessarily. It's but, but like she said, many of us forget. Forget, yes. Some fathers that beat their children did not used to come eight out of ten. Out they of were ten. Eleven out of ten. They don't speak the <laughs> truth to their children. Well, 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 from that, the life the child lives. It's a function of the inspiration the child is drawing from you. From but you. as you are talking, I'm just thinking in my mind, even if in a class of 10, a child gets 9 or even the 10, can't we think that these 10 people are clever people? You know, because it's somebody it's must it's come it's first. Yes. Yes. yes, it doesn't really mean that that child that is, is dull. dull. Exactly. You understand what I mean? Because we are all clever or brilliant people. But some people are just more brilliant than, than the rest. Others, yes. We have exceptional to, children. Yes. Yeah. Very, to very exceptional. It has to do with communication. Okay. Have three kinds of communication. Upward communication, downward communication, and a horizontal communication. Wow. You know, some parents talk to their child, like they, they consider their relationship with their child as being an upward relationship that has to, that a, an upward communication has to sustain. Meaning you are on the top or at the top and the your children. child has to be looking up to you. Dad, as the author of initial visit, that's not true. Wow. Or the child is down and you are one big man at the top and you have to, you know, suppress and oppress. Everything you say becomes, that's not true. You have to communicate with your child horizontally, directly. Look into the eyes of the child and know and find out what is happening. That's where trust come in, comes in. So that the child can, I mean, be able to confide that very challenge. Because the challenges the child faces are also dynamic as the child grows. Yes. For instance, a child of three years or two years, his problem could be sweet chewing gum and all that. But as he gets to nine, ten, eleven, problem changes. Boyfriend, boyfriend, and, and yes. then people, the child well, starts developing that normal. That is a big uh, issue. These are it's issues really, that yes. you must take note of because as the child is progressing in the age into adulthood, issues yeah. becomes. I mean, issues begins to change. Yes. Let me and interrupt. I have like three generations of children in my house. My first three children are close together in age. Then the next three, then one little one. I have seven children. Wow. My first son is 30, 28, 25. Then I have 17, 16, 13. Wow. We were done. Then after eight years, one little lady showed up. She <laughs> showed up. She as if, as, as if you were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have watched my children at different stages struggle with different things. Wow. So it's so real what you're saying because I've experienced it. And I've also watched the type of struggle change according to the generation. When my older children were growing, we didn't have internet. The social no. network? Yeah, social struggle network. with the younger ones now, these 17 to 13 year old, is, is totally different from the struggle. The I kind of world, the kind of yes. everything. The things that we're dealing with. And this little one now is ruling the house. <laughs> she knows too much. Yes. There's no computer she will not operate at six. They, bring your iPad. She will open your password. She will try it three times and open your. That's your the information computer. age we are talking so, of. It, like you said, yes. at each stage, there's a different dynamic going on with the child. Right. One of the things that we lack is that platform of counseling, trauma centers, all these things. They're not available to our children. If yes. even Tina, do we don't. We I don't, said we, we don't, don't have, have it. it. We okay. don't. I have not seen any place where it's set up for child counseling. Outside the schools where they're doing guidance no, and counseling for career development. development. I don't really find 
platforms where kids can be either uh, helped with things going on at home or children of disaster like that flooding that took away homes and killed families. Yeah. Those kids need counseling, counseling. trauma counseling. Yeah. Yes. We just think, oh yeah, the thing don't pass. They don't get new house now. Yes. It stays. These are the things that have yes. been built yeah. in them. And you know, um, one very mistake our parents do: they don't give that room for listening. Mm. You know, sometimes exactly. you have kids that want to tell you something. Maybe, mommy, mommy, look at what happened in school today. And you feel like, no, 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 I, I'm junior, I'm busy, I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't, Not no. even the way you are yes. saying it. We say them. it, shouting. Yes. Hey, please, can't you say I'm busy? Yes. Can't you say I'm this, I'm you know, tired, I will walk thing. everywhere? Yes. Go so they don't give them listening ears. So you as a parent, what do you do? If your child comes up to you and, mommy, I want to tell you something, especially your teenage girl. You know, they have lots of experiences. Mm. They have lots of things to tell you. Maybe who talk, talks to them. One uncle said something, one brother, mommy, I want to ask her a question. And you'll be like, I have something to catch up with in the market or I'm at work. Running. You know? There's nothing wrong so with you that. Don't you even come back later. Have, yes. I, said, hey, I could not listen to you that time because I was rushing somewhere. What was it you wanted to tell me? Yes. What we don't do is come back. Come back, yes, we don't. Because sometimes Parents we don't choose the very wrong moments to come yes. back. Yes. But if you say, remind me when I come back, yes. or when I wake up, your child knows that you're not. Pushing them off, mm -hmm. yes. brushing them off. You are just looking for a more yes. appropriate time to do the talking. Yes. Okay, now let's talk about the solutions. What do we do Fine. as parents, even as children too? Because okay. sometimes uh, the parents may be illiterate and they don't really know what to do. The solution to uh, a lot of these problems we enumerated here is doesn't fall on the shoulder of one person. It's a societal um, uh, uh, issue. Issue, issue that society at large, at all level, have to come out. Like I said, I live by the Bible. Okay. There is no human being that can lay claim to true health if he's not also spiritually healthy. He can be emotionally healthy, physically healthy. If you're not spiritually healthy, you are not truly a healthy person. Wow. So the spirituality of the child is very, very key. I discover that people who have a deep sense of spirituality, it doesn't matter which religion, from early on, have less tendencies to derail in the future Very true. because it acts as a streamliner Very it true. acts like a, a focus for the child to to help with the decisions they take so if the parents are not taking the time to instill in the children a fear of, of the almighty yes okay a respect for the values that almighty would approve it becomes a problem Okay. The bottom line in what we're saying is society is a product of the families that make up the society. If the family fails, society is failed. Parents, the Bible even said it, provoke not your children to anger. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will never depart from it. Treat your children with love, care, and attention, and provoke them not. That's my advice. Okay, um, I would just say that in trying to curb all these issues of race, you know, all, we all have to be responsible once again and responsive and rise up to this occasion collectively. Like she mentioned, Minister of Social Welfare and Rehabilitation, they've been very adamant. I, I've really not seen programs organized by exactly. these exactly. groups. Let's have workshops, let's have seminars, invite parents, parents, teachers, organizations, associations in the school. Let's, let's have them, let's discuss these issues and let's see how we can, I mean, enforce these laws that are already existing and see how we can collectively protect the child okay. from those things that are very that threatens the child's very existence. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. If you are a child being abused, if you are a child in pain and there's nobody to talk to, at the end of this show there will be phone numbers. Please call Auntie Fina. She would know how to help you. Don't keep quiet. If there's nobody around you that you can trust, you can trust Auntie Fina. Call her She'll be able to show you who to talk to or talk to you herself so that you can know how to manage the situation that you are in and not go under because some adult is not holding up their responsibility effectively. To keep up with the show, visit www.tushtv.tv. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tushpaste TV. Join the conversation on social media and like us on Facebook at Official Touche TV. 
Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Official Touch TV. We love to hear from you. Please learn to say your problem because the moment you say your problem, you are solving it without knowing. As a society, let's please be involved with other children's problems because it is not only who you gave birth to that is your child. Every child is our child and every parent is our parent. I remain Fina, your host, and this is your show, Getting Real with Fina.